Hello everyone and welcome to this Make Code from Microbit episode. My name is Pelly. I work for the Make Code team here in Seattle, Washington. My name is Emil. Emil, Emil, I've got a surprise for you. Uh -huh. And this is it. It's a lock. Yeah, it doesn't really look good. All right, it's a combination lock. Hopefully, maybe I put it on the can you put it on the, yeah. the camera there? And we're gonna talk about locks and escape rooms today. Let's, lay, let's leave the lock there. Okay, so escape rooms. Here we go. Have you done an escape room before? Yep. So what's uh, what is an escape room? You have you have time. You have and time. Try to leave a room by getting clues and opening a lock or something yeah so there's locks and riddles and enigmas and hints and everything and using a combination lock is actually a great way to build an escape room using a micro bit mm -hmm. uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do a program in the micro bit that has a secret code so has a combination of the lock mm -hmm. and you have to do a combination of buttons so you have to do a sequence of A, B, B, and B. And if you do it right, the micro bit will show the, the number on the screen. So it's kind of a mix of, uh, and of course the lock is real for physical. So if you put the lock on something and the, let's say the key of the room is in there, then they're gonna have to solve the problem on the micro bit. And we've used the micro bit to build super cool uh, escape rooms, uh, especially using the radio feature. All right. Let's get started. So the goal of today is to uh, create a microbit program that requires a secret sequence of A, B, A, B button presses. And if you do the right one, then we show a number. Okay. All right. Let's see what we're going to do. So we're going to learn about actually text and strings today uh, to solve that. Mm. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're going to need a variable. So yeah, you need on start. So let's start by creating a variable that holds our secret. And that's going to be the number. And in this case, we can look it up. Is that yeah. your secret number? No, it's fine. We know it's, it's, we know it's our secret. Uh, so let's assign that to the number that we have. So these are kind of our magic constants. Uh, can you look at the, the lock What we have? I'll switch. If you look on the other, if you lift it, now if you turn it around, there you go. No. On the edge. Yeah. You have to lower it. Well, anyway, tell me the number. 1973. Yeah, I think you, three, Seven nine one. You read it the other way around. Yeah, okay. okay, so that's our secret. That is the combination that the user needs to know. All right. So I've added that in in our code here. All right. Now the next thing we're gonna have to want to do is um, the key. key. So the combo of keys. So we're going to create a new variable and that's going to hold, uh, it can be the key, yeah, the key. And set key. Set key. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work with text because it's a combination of A and Bs and text is in advanced text. All right, the first one there. I let you create a, a text slot and you put it there and now you can write in that. So what do you want as a combo? You have two letters. Two letters? Well, you have oh, yeah, a button B. A or button B. Oh, okay. Let's make it cap so it, so yeah, it looks better. Easy. Easy A. All right, so that's going to be the sequence that the user is going to have to do B, uh, wait, B, B, A, B, A, A, 
And if it does that, then we should show the, the secret. Okay, so we need if, right? Um, okay, so we're gonna need a variable to hold the current, uh, the current key that the um, that the user is is entering. Current key. Let's call it current key. Yeah. Oh, let's let's get rid of the caps. And key. or user key. Oh yeah, user key is better. I guess rename it. User key is great. User key, and we want to initialize that. And on start, using a set, yes. Yeah. And it's a piece of text, so we're gonna do the same as the key. We're gonna grab that empty text. Text is a you know, in microbit, you have numbers, mm -hmm. you have text, and you have these true-false variables. Mm -hmm. All right, we empty, we initialize it as empty. This, this is empty, which is perfect. Okay, now how do we do? How do we start recording the entries of the user? So we're gonna want to do things when he presses the button. So how do we handle buttons? Um, perfect. And button B. B. All right. So let's let's start with button A. Let's move out of the way. And uh, let's go in text. And what you want to do? So what happens when you press A? Um. Well, we start entering the key. You start entering the key. Um, yeah. And you switch it to. Can you switch into the? This this view? Yes. So what's going to happen is you press button A, and then let's say you already have some kind of sequence, and now you're going to add button A to it, and then you're going to store that into your user key. And that's your user key. So you grab your user key, you add A to it, and then you store it in it. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. All right, let's do it in code. All right, let's do that. So we're gonna. Uh, let's see. Well, I, I think if you go in text, you'll see there's there's a lot of blocks that are useful there, and one of them is called join. So we're gonna we're gonna want to join. Okay, so the the way we're gonna do that is. Um, we're gonna create a little variable. Oops. Let's create a variable. And we're gonna call it temporary temp. No do that. Alright, so I'm gonna use temp here and I'm gonna store the result. So remember we have to join the current key. So the current key that is in the variable, we're going to read the variable. And because we're in button A, we're going to add A to it. Right, so we're uh, just add A. Yeah, you can just type it. Oh, oh hold on. Um, I'll just go hang up. Phone call. Nobody's answering. <laughs> All right. So we've we've created this user. We've created a new string that has a added. And now what we want to do is store it back into user key. So we want to store. So how do you store value? Change? Yeah. 
Uh, change will add things. Oh, set. Set. Set replaces, and then you want to set the user key to be the the value that's stored in temp. To be value that's stored in temp. So I'm gonna user key. No, a. I'm no, sure. you. Let me show you how this works. If you think about how memory works. I'm going to need another page. Hold on. Hold it. All right. I have a Sharpie. So we've got. Oh, a black Sharpie. Yeah, we got here a piece of memory called user key. And here we've got a piece of memory called temp. And let's say this one contains BB. And what we do is we read it and we add A to it. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And then we store it in temp. Yeah? Sure. And then we read this and we put it back into user key. And we yeah. get BBA in here. So, can you go back to the editor? That's what's happening here in the blocks. Store this in, in a little place to do all our computation, then store it back in the variable. Now, one thing that's really helpful is to use serial uh, right line to actually uh, display uh, things in the console. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to show the value of user key. Now, if you run that in the simulator, let's press A. You see how there is a show console? So click on that. Now, click uh, keep clicking A. So what you're doing is, you see how there's AAA? Mm -hmm. So it's basically showing you, you've asked the computer to show the value that's inside of user key. So we can use that to trace what our program is doing. And it's actually working as expected, meaning whenever we press A, we add one A to the sequence. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do the same for B. Can you? Can you collapse the, the view? Yeah. All right. And B, is that correct? Let's try it. Let's test it. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, I know what's wrong. Simple, simple. Yeah, so, so tracing is very useful to debug your your program and you can use tracing all over your okay let's try let's test it mm -hmm. let's make sure we got it right b a b a b all right now now we need to do the check whether we've got the right key yeah. i know it's cool <laughs> we lost the meal there okay let's let's okay the patterns are pretty cool. Yeah, it looks nice. Uh, all right, so let's focus on button A. So let's see. So we're, we've entered a key, and now we need to check whether this key is equal to, this user key is equal to the key. Now, how do we do tests? How do we test if something is true and run different code? Yeah. Yep. All right, let's put that in. That's great. And now we're going to test if, so you want to put that in there too? Uh, how about we do A before and then okay. maybe we'll do a function after mm -hmm. that. Uh, all right, so we need to test that. Uh, what are we testing? Um, we're testing that user the user, user is in key equals the key. Excellent. All right, so let's go in logic and find the equals operator and we can drop the two variables in there. 
Yep. No, you can you can uh, clone the other one if you want. Wow. Clone user key again and change. Wow. But you have to move out of the corner there. No go zone here. Mill, because the camera is. Oh, zone. yep, yep, yep. All right. Okay, so if the key is equal, if the user key is equal to the key, then uh, bingo, we show the secret code. Then show. Show. Yeah, it's a number. So it's a show number. Boom. There. Uh, I think uh, that's we want to show the secret. There you go. There you go. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Let's try it. And we could do if it doesn't. Yeah, we'll we'll cover that case later. Let's try. Okay, it's. How about we make it simple for testing? Do A, B. Once it works, we can make it super hard, but for testing, we want kind of a... S okay, we want a shortish. Yeah. And I'm gonna enable tracing. All right, so A, not equal, so it went through. B, A again. Ta, 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 ta. The lock is unlocked. All right, we've got the basics. Um, let's fix button B. Okay, let's do button B, so I'm just gonna. And can we avoid all this duplication of code? What's a good way to do that? Um, functions. Yeah, let's create a function. For button A? Uh, well, we can move as much code as we can. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you think about, if you look at A and B, if you m put them on top of each other. What could you just do on button A pressed? You could do, this whole set of blocks could be a function. Yeah, and then, then on, just on, on button A pressed, it just calls a function. All right, so let's create a function and let's move it out and then do something called refactoring. It's so you want to typically you want to put a verb in your function because it tells you what it's doing. Do press A? I don't know. So you you press A and now the, the the role of the function is to maybe check the key. Check key. Yeah. There you go. All right. Let's move the code. So what is the code that is common between those two. This. Uh, this is common. Wait, 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 wait. This is the same. This is the same. This is the, this same. Is the same. Not the same. Yeah. So all the stuff here. Boom. Whole bunch of code. Yeah, all this. And that just goes to the trash. Now remember, we need to make sure we put the the calls. There you go. And here we go. Perfect. Yay. You see that? Yeah, I'm going to move the function in the view so we see it. And maybe A and B. Can we get everybody in the view? Yeah. Come on, everybody. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. All right, let's try it. So I think it's A, mm. B, <laughs> A, and we got the secret. And we can see in the log that we got A B A. So already right there, you've got you've got a very exciting um, escape room mechanism that you can do with any combination lock you have at home. Um, now there's one thing we should improve uh, if you go back to the code. And you can see it here. When the user has a code that is too long, how does he reset? How do we reset the code? Uh, clear. Yeah, so one thing we could do is we could detect that the, the key is too long. No. 
And then if it's too long, we tell the user, you know, we show him some kind of frowning saying like you're dead. Yeah. All right. So where would we put that? In the check key. Yeah, in the check key. Um, so we've tested whether they are equals and that's our kind of a happy path. Now if you go back to the code, so you first check that they're equal. Mm -hmm. And then, well, if that happens, you know, good, good for you, mm -hmm. get the code. But then what about adding another case here? And let's add one more. Now, what do you need to check? How do you know that? So this. Um, we, we need one of these. Yeah, right? we need one of these for sure. And we want to check that he's entered too many letters. Um, um, so if you go in text, you can see that there is an operator called length of the second one. And it tells you how many characters you have, how many letters you have in your string. So if we okay, know length that. Length of user key. Yes. The length of the user key is what? Bigger than. Bigger. Greater than. Greater than. The length of the secret. Perfect. Or the uh, key. No, the key. But that, yes, but that's not the length. Wait. You want to do the length again. He's not happy. So how about we move this out? I clone this. There we go. Oh, yeah. And this should be key. Excellent. So we know, oh, too bad. You've entered too many keys. Yeah. Wink, wink, wink. And we do here. And then we do bad, bad. And that's clear. So like, like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then the last thing would be maybe. No, we could just leave it. No, that's cool. We can leave it. We should clear the, the key. Clear. We should reset the user key. You know, basically you try your combination oh, yeah. and then it's like wank, wank, and then... Do we uh, have a reset? Uh, reset? In variables, you have. Reset. That, uh, that works too. It basically resets the whole micro bit. That would work. It power cycles it, which is a brutal way to do it, but... We're lazy. It'll work. Oh, you got it right. And boom. And it's a restart. But there's another way to do it. Think about your variables. Mm -hmm. You could just set the variable user key to an empty string. I think, okay, that, that, I think that works better. Let's but try it. it. Let's see it in the log. So I'm doing A. Oopsie, wrong, very wrong, X, and then when I press A again, I'm starting again. Yeah, but it doesn't clear the string. Yeah, that's actually a good, yeah, can you fix that bug? It might be too short. I might put, how about we do a little animation with the, yeah. User kind of needs to understand really for a long time that he was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see that. All right. Now there's one more thing I want to do, and this is something when I when I press the button, mm -hmm. I I kind of like to uh, see like a visually that the button has been registered oh yeah okay so we'll just do on the show so in check key Could we can I do, do it. show number a no uh yeah no uh, a is not a number oh no i know what i can do you can do show string show string 
But you want to do it before before you do the check. And you want to do the same for B. So now that now the user knows that we've, you know, the because sometimes you don't press the button hard enough or things like that. Okay. A B B Oh, you should clear the screen. Because I don't know the second B work. Okay. So how about you add this clear screen after show string B. Oh, you know, even more fancy. Add a space between after B. It's going to scroll out of the screen. Ooh, B. <laughs> fancy. Yeah, and add a space behind the A. A and B. A, B. See, it didn't register it. Oh, yeah, that's double B. Wait a minute. All right. Well, Perfect. I think we've got our app here. Let's try it on the real thing. So I'm going to click download, right click. Uh, how about you close the lock first? It's, it's on the combination, so you yeah. put it in and then you wiggle the, I hope it's on the combination. It doesn't lock? Oh my God. Yeah, it does. Hold on. Oh. Well, let me do that. Oh no, somebody touched it. We're doomed. It's not the right combination. <laughs> No, it's not the right combination. Oh yeah, no, we lost it. Three seven nine one. Yeah, but that. That was not the right that's one. That's not the right one. All right. <laughs> well, let's let's test the lock first. I'm gonna save that to the micro bit. I need to read the manual of the lock to. Oh my God, how many micro bits do I have here? Way way too many micro bits attached to this machine. And it's flashing. You remember the secret code? Okay, this is not it. So I'm just going to move it. Away. All right. So I'm going to press I'm going to A and I'm going to make a mistake. A again. A again. And one more time. Whack. Not happy. All right, now I'm going to do A, B. Yeah, it's impossible. A. Mm. Didn't work. What's the secret code? We have no idea. <laughs> Can you look in the code? Oh, uh, no, it's ABA. You sure? I'm sitting in the most uncomfortable way. ABA. ABA. It didn't work out for me. Because we're doing A space. A. B. A. Because we're doing A space. See, I think it's different. No. Should work. No, 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 no space. But you have spaces in the letters. No, just in the show. Oh. Oh, we have a bug here. Ooh, MG. You. I mean, we're gonna have to debug the hardware. And it doesn't show the secret. And if I do one more. It's like it showed the secret. It's slow. It's slow. Let's remove the spaces. You did, didn't you? Didn't you I'm gonna I'm gonna do multiple multiple show secrets here. 
so I don't miss it. All right. All right, let's, let's download this again. Otherwise, we're going to have to debug the micro bit. In theory, this should have worked perfectly. Then the demo gods are against us today. Is it saving? It's, it's done? It's done. No. Nothing's happening. <laughs> the patheticness is unreal. Can you go back? Alright, it's flashing. Okay. Done. A. B. A. Oh! Boom! Boom! It was the spaces that were pathetic. The spaces. Messed up, and then it shows the number now, and we don't even know when it starts or stops. Yes, 3791, which is not the number of our combination. <laughs> But still, it's pretty good. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the combination lock from Macrobit. There's one thing I like to do, just as a, you know, to just to make sure people know that this is, this is on. So I'm just going to add it forever. And, uh, and toggle a little LED. Two, two. No, four, four. So I'm going to do that if if there's no user key. So I know the user hasn't. How do I test that there's no user key? So if there's no user key, I'm gonna I'm gonna toggle this little guy just to make sure that people know that this is on. Let's look at the simulator. You know, it's like hey. Come on, do hey something boy. with me. Come on, boy. So I need to check that the user key is empty. How do I do that? How would we do that, Emil? Um, variables? Yeah, let's do uh, the same as we did for the length of the key. We grab the length of the text. If the user key is empty, it has no characters. Not that. No, we're looking for a condition. Oh. So you want me to test that the length of the user key is zero. Logic? Yeah. No, I already have an if. Um, so something in here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And equals, and then we're going to need the length of the user key. The length of the user key. User key, yes. You need the length. Uh, length of. There we go. And that should be user key. Yeah. Fine. No? That's oh, okay. good. If it's zero. Yeah. So it blinks, but as soon as you press A, it stops blinking. Mm. Alright, let's try it. Send it to the hardware. The final test. And switch view. Done. It's flashing. Famous blinking light. Things done. It's done. Yeah. See now it's flashing. It's like work with me. Work oh with God. me. A, A, B, B. Quack. Unhappy. A. B, A, success! <sighs> All right, uh, and tomorrow we'll see how we can make that a radio controlled escape room? Escape room where maybe you enter a code on one micro bit and then the other micro bit shows a code. Ooh, that's going to be exciting. All right, and that will be for the next episode. Thank you everybody for watching.